Hello, hi, hi there. Thank you for joining me today. So I've got a different kind of video for you today. I'm doing 24 frugal grocery shopping tips to save big money at the grocery store. If that sounds like something you are interested in, then stay tuned. We all know how crazy the grocery store has been getting these days. It has been harder and harder to save a dollar. I will spend $800 in one month or more at the grocery store. We are a five person family. So it's me, my hubby and my three kiddos. And it's crazy how much we spend at the grocery store. We do not eat out and I do make most of my meals from scratch. Not actual scratch, I'm not like baking bread or anything, but I do definitely utilize my deep freezer and I make a lot of high protein, high fat meals, low carbs, low sugar meals, because I do like to keep us fulfilled and away from snacking. That is one of the ways that I save money. But let's get into my suggestions and let's make a list of these. I am going to be hitting this really hard coming next month here. We've got no by July, but I do this year round anyway. I want to save money on groceries and I don't want to be wasting money and kind of have a game plan before I just go willy nilly out there spending a thousand dollars on groceries this month. First things first, I think we're going to say most important step is use cash. I do use cash to buy all of my groceries as long as I can, as long as I've budgeted correctly, I will be using cash to buy all of my groceries. So I have a cash stuffing wallet. I already have my budget worked out. I have my cash in my wallet. And I think tip number one, biggest tip of all needs to be use cash when you shop for groceries. So we're going to say use cash. All right. Tip number two, as soon as I, I'm going to go grocery shopping before I even write a list, I head straight to my pantry and I shop my pantry first. So basically what that means is I'm going to look over my pantry, see what staples are missing, see what I have to make meals and get ideas of what I want to make this week. Shop the pantry first. All right. Then I'm going to make my list. Very important to make your list and stick to your list. But if you need baking soda and it's not in your list, get your baking soda. If you see steak on sale, get it, even though it's not on the list. If you're walking by and you see those chocolate covered strawberries and they're not on your list and you don't need them, use your list as a backup. Use it as your wingman to let you know you don't need those chocolate covered strawberries. Make a list. All right. Number four, I'm going to find my calculator and I'm going to bring my calculator to the store with me. I am not going to just stick with my iPhone because that is easily erasable. It's easy to mess up. I'm going to bring my trusty calculator. Mine stays on my desk unless I'm at the store. Now, number five, what am I going to do next? I'm going to eat. I am not going to go to the grocery store hungry because that is going to sabotage my plan. I am going to eat first. Okay. Number six, I'm going to check the ads. If there are ads for the store I'm going to, if this is applicable to you, check your ads or just shop the sales. If you get to the store and there's the front entryway that has all of the loss leaders, the deal breakers, those big signs that look like amazing prices, shop those sales. I'm gonna say, what? Check the ads, shop the sales. All right. Number seven is we're gonna go to the cheapest store around. For me, that is a Winco. I don't know if you guys have a Winco, but Winco is a lifesaver. They definitely outdo Walmart. They outdo Food Max. They outdo everybody. Winco is my favorite of all. So number seven, I'm going to say shop your cheapest store. Okay. Number eight. Now, I struggle with this one, and I do it... 
95% of the time. And I am a gig worker, so I actually have a lot of these. But bring your own reusable bags, because here in California anyways, we charge 10 cents per bag, and that does add up. I'm going to say bring your own bags. All right, it looks like we're moving along here. What is that, number nine? Number nine, okay, this might be controversial, and it might not be like the motherly thing to do, but leave the kids at home and shop alone. Leave the hubby at home, leave everybody at home. You need dedicated space in your head. You need to not be hungry. You need to be following your list. You need to be using your calculator and you don't need anybody telling you what they want, what they need, or that they need to go potty. So shop alone. We are to number 10 already. Okay, number 10 is a really important one. I struggle with this one. I have struggled with this one for years and it is perishables. One thing that I love to do is I will get two bags of salad, maybe a head of lettuce and some other greenery because we do cook a lot and I love to have fresh greens. But that's only gonna last a few days. Don't overshop the perishables. Like if your kids are using a full gallon of milk, that's great, buy the full gallon of milk. But if you're only using half a gallon of milk a week, only buy the half a gallon of milk. It's not the actual cost per ounce on that, it's the how much are you gonna use. So if you're throwing away a half a gallon of milk each week because it's going bad, you might as well just buy that half a gallon to start with. Well, you get what I'm saying. Don't ever buy on the perishables. Okay, number 11. It's kind of the opposite of don't overbuy because we're going to say buy in bulk. When it makes sense to buy in bulk, totally buy in bulk. My favorite store, Winco, does have bulk bins and they are, oh my gosh, amazing. They are my most favorite way to buy anything, especially seasonings. I buy all of my seasonings bulk and I pay pennies on the dollar for them. I can't even imagine paying like full price for cinnamon anymore. Definitely buy in bulk whenever you can. One thing that I do, I live right next to my mother and I have a couple of friends in town that I actually share shop with. So what I will do is when I'm going to Costco, I will send a picture of what I'm thinking of buying along with the price to a friend or family member and ask if they want to share it with me. They'll pay for half of it, I'll pay for half of it, or however we want to split it, but we will share shop. And it works out so well, especially with my mother. We share shop a lot. And it, it's a way to bulk buy even bigger. If you can do that, if you can look into, if you know that your sister loves the same coffee as you, maybe you can bulk buy that coffee and save some money. I'm gonna say bulk buy and share shop. All right, now number 12, let's see here. Number 12 goes along with the bulk buying, deep freeze. I do have a very large freezer attached to my normal refrigerator, as well as a large chest freezer. The chest freezer is really where it's at, you guys. We invested in that maybe six or seven years ago. It has been the best investment. I have never regretted it. I've actually, over the years, I've thought of getting a second chest freezer, but we don't actually need that much deep freeze. But the deep freezer, the chest freezer has been a lifesaver. It allows us to freeze food and keep it for a very long time. It allows us to bulk buy meat. What I do is I will double or even triple Ziploc bag my meat. I don't have any fancy freezer bags or anything special. I literally just buy Ziploc freezer bags, not even Ziploc, the zipper freezer bags that are generic store brand 
and I just double or triple them. I'll get as much air out of the bag as I can and I'll just put another bag or another bag on top and I la my meat lasts six to nine months in the freezer, you guys. And vegetables will last about three months or so without getting freezer burned if they're in triple bags. But my kids don't really like frozen vegetables anyway, so we just keep fresh or canned on hand. Most of my chest freezer is full of meat and that's kind of the way I like it. What I'm going to say is freeze food in double or triple zipper bags, but we'll just say freeze food. All right, 13. This may be the most controversial thing I say in my list. I know this goes against what a lot of people say, but don't meal prep. Okay, I don't mean don't meal prep. Some of you are great at meal prepping, but if you're not going to eat it all, don't meal prep. If you're going to get bored with it, don't meal prep. If your kids don't really even like it and you're going to fill your freezer with food that you paid too much for, you spent all this time prepping and no one wants, don't meal prep. But if you're great at it, do it. I totally have like all of the props in the world for you. I have tried to meal prep repeatedly and all it ever seems to do is make me waste time, waste money, and feel aggravated when no one wants to eat the food that I made last week. Anyway, if you're good at it, by all means do it. But my number 13 is don't meal prep unless you're going to eat it all. So I'm going to say don't over meal prep. So number 14, this is something I've been doing for a very long time now. I shop twice a week. When I get paid, I do a big shop, like a $100 shop, $120 shop, $150 shop, a big shop. I get everything we need. I get lots of meat. I get cheese. I get bread. I get all of the different staples. Then two, three, four days in, we start to run out of things. Maybe we run out of some bread. Maybe we will run out of some milk, some heavy cream, some butter, something. So I make the little list. And my little list is only the essentials. And then everything that isn't essential gets added to the next shopping list for the next big shop. So I do two shopping trips a week, one big, one little. I'm gonna put shop twice a week and sometimes our little shop is not at the cheaper grocery store but it's the essentials and those are generally reasonably priced at almost any grocery store if you're just looking for like bread milk and lunch meat or whatever you know i've almost lost track i think we're at 15 here so for 15 i'm gonna say cook your meals at home if you can cook your meals at home and eat at home, cooking your meals at home can save you so much money. We have numerous dinners that cost us $10 for all five of us to eat. We do things like taco night, burrito night, tuna casserole, breakfast for dinner. We do quite a few different things that add up to $10 to $12 for the entire meal for all five of us. Now, you're not doing that out at a restaurant and you basically challenged to do it at home, but I'm doing it and we're making it work. It is hard to even work out how much you've spent on food, but we like to do something like $25 per day for the whole day for all of us. So that's $5 per person per day. And if we can achieve that, I am super happy with that goal for the day. And then we can splurge on, you know, $20 dinners here and there. And that makes it so we don't overspend. So when we do like a steak dinner, like a $30 dinner, it doesn't hurt as much. It doesn't feel like it costs as much and we can still stay within budget. I do try to stay around $700 to $800 a month for our food budget. And that is a challenge, especially since I am making all Almost all of our food at home, we do rarely eat out, but I'm going to say cook meals at home. Eat at home. Cook and eat at home. 
All right. Let's see here. How about for 16? I'm going to say eat whole foods. Eating whole foods is a very important thing to my family. One thing we really like to do is to eat a very high protein lunch and a very high fat dinner. If we can get the kids feeling full all the way from lunch to dinner with no snack in between, I have succeeded. Now, if they do crash on me and they want a snack, we do like a cheese stick, some nuts, maybe a scoop of peanut butter, something like that that isn't a pre-purchased, individually packaged, expensive snack. We just do celery sticks with peanut butter or carrot sticks with ranch or something that makes a quick, easy, cheap snack if we do snack. But I try to avoid snacking. So I try to just let you be hungry for your meal times, eat at meal times, and eat good whole foods. So that's what I put for number 16 is eat whole foods. And that kind of brings me to what I was just touching on a little bit. Number 17, I'm going to say eat as a family and eat at a set meal time. If you have a set meal time, when your kids are bugging you at 1115 for a snack, you can just say, you know that lunch is at 12 o'clock and you will be fine. And if you really do need to give them a snack, you know, like I said, give them a scoop of peanut butter or a cheese stick or something that won't mess up the lunch. But we're going to want to give them a lot of food for this lunch so that they can feel full all the way till dinner. I'm definitely going to say eat as a family unit at a set meal time. Now, one thing I rarely ever do is by name brand. So I am definitely going for number 18 is buy store brands. You guys, I buy store brands all the time. Like literally the majority of the time. I buy store brands of everything. There is very rarely a name brand I will buy. One of the only things that we will buy is graham crackers. We haven't found a good store brand of graham crackers. We do like the honey made graham crackers. So we'll buy the real graham crackers, but I will buy generic of everything else. My kids don't even know most of the name brands out there, what they're supposed to look like and what they're supposed to be because I've been doing the store brand for so long. And since I've started budgeting, I have switched to almost 100% store brand. Definitely going to say buy store brands or at least give them a try. Check them out. You guys, normally it's almost the same product. It might even be the same product, just in a different box. We really do enjoy our store brands and we save a lot of money doing it. So number 19, I'm going to put... Don't buy snacks. And I don't mean don't snack. I think I already touched on that a little bit. It's if the kids need a snack, they need a snack. But I don't buy the prepackaged little snacks. Like those little bags of whatever they are, Oreos and Chips Ahoy's and Teddy Grahams and whatever. Those are so, so expensive. If you wanted to buy those, if I wanted to buy those for my kids, I would buy the bigger bag and just put them in little Ziploc bags. I don't know what the appeal about the tiny little package is, but you definitely pay more for that. I'm going to say don't buy snacks. All right. Another thing we do in my family, and it would be a challenge if I hadn't done it since the kids were born. My kids drink water. And basically nothing else. They will drink milk here and there, but not normally. They'll drink a little bit of my iced tea, but not normally. They don't drink my coffee. So our household drinks water, tea, and coffee, which saves us a lot of money. Sometimes I go to households that drink energy drinks that drink vitamin drinks, they drink soda drinks, they drink alcoholic drinks, they drink a lot of different drinks that cost a lot of money, just juice drinks. 
Oh my goodness, you guys, some of those, I don't know what they're even called. I'll have to put them up here, but Ottawala maybe, or I don't even know what they're called. The, those juice drinks that people drink, I have read the prices on those. We're gonna say, drink water. That will save you a lot of money if you can drink water. I do understand if you guys are not water drinkers um, to start with. It's so hard to give up your sodas and your flavored drinks. But if you can, I'm sure it would be better for your health. And it's definitely better for your pocketbook. Let's see here. That was number 20, right? Number 20. We are on to number 21. We're going to say when you are shopping and you've got your calculator in your store, you're gonna actually use your calculator. So you're gonna use your calculator to calculate the per ounce price. A lot of times they've already got it broken down for you at some of these stores nowadays. But if you don't have it broken down for you, you're gonna use your calculator to work out the per ounce or per piece per product price. Okay, we are on to 22. 22 is one I am cheating on because I'm going to say get laying hens, but I don't have any laying hens. My cheat is my mom has laying hens. My mom is my neighbor and she has 40 laying hens. That's too much for her and my dad. That's too much for my family to eat. She does sell her eggs for $5 a dozen and we get the extras. I do suggest that you either get laying hens or maybe you can share laying hens, which is kind of what we do because all of our food scraps, all of our food waste, we just walk it over to the chickens as extra food for those chickens because they are feeding us eggs, so we feed them our scraps. It does work out quite well for us, especially since they're not even in our yard. So we have cheater chickens, <laughs> but I do suggest you get laying hens because they have been nothing but a blessing to us. During that egg shortage a few years back, we had plenty of eggs to go and gather and we really do enjoy the chickens too. They probably keep the pest down because they do pick up all the little buggies and everything. So they probably benefit us in so many more ways than I even know. For 22, I'm gonna put get laying hens. Okay, we should be at 23 now. I say make your coffee at home. I mean, everyone says it, everyone knows. It is so much cheaper to make your coffee at home. I do make the K-cup, the pods, which isn't the cheapest way to make coffee. I know it would be cheaper if I were to just brew a pot of coffee, but I love the different varieties of coffee. I love to have a different coffee. Every time I have a coffee, I have a different flavored coffee. The K-cups are definitely for me, and they're not that expensive. I do spend on average about 40 cents per K-cup. And then I put heavy cream in there. So my coffees are still under 65 cents, even if I put a lot of heavy cream. And that is way better than you're doing if you're buying a coffee anywhere out in the wild. 65 cents is a great price for a cup of coffee. I know it would be cheaper if I were to just brew a whole pot. And especially if I were to just use half and half. You guys are probably down at like 30 cents a cup or something like that. But I wouldn't be as happy with it. I'm gonna say make your coffee at home, find the coffee you want, and then make your coffee at home. Last but not least, we're already to number 24. One thing that has helped me, now I do like to shop at Winco and they don't offer this service, but I do also shop at Walmart and they do offer the service. You can shop online for your groceries. You can virtually load them into your cart. You pay for them and they will bring them out to your car for you. So that is awesome because it eliminates any possibility of impulse buying. I am an impulse buyer. I don't necessarily stick 100% to the list. I do use it as a guideline 
and I try not to buy anything frivolous, but I do sometimes add things that I don't need to the cart and that curbs it 100%. If you load it into your digital cart and you've already paid for it and it's being picked for you and you're just going to pick it up from the store later on today or tomorrow, you don't have an option to impulse buy, to walk by something, see it and just add it to the cart. Now they do have this little option at the end of you shopping at Walmart where it says, these are items you purchased before. Would you like to add them to the cart? And it shows you things that you've purchased before. It tries to get you to impulse buy even in the digital cart, but they are so much easier to pass up than the regular impulse buy. They do get me sometimes because every once in a while they'll show me something like a gallon of milk and I'll be like, oh, I did not add milk and I do need milk. But most of the time it's very easy for me to just scan past what they're telling me that I might want to buy again and ignore that and just load the cart with the items I wanted to pick up, pay for them and be done with it. Not really think about it again. Then when I pick up my items the next day, sometimes I'll even just send my hubby to pick up the items. So I'm not tempted to run into the store for the one or two things that I've thought of since I made that purchase. But I'm gonna make number 24, order for pickup, but definitely wanna make a comment on that, not for delivery. You don't wanna order for delivery. There is delivery fees involved in delivery and sometimes they even pad the cost of the groceries when you are getting them delivered. Like on Instacart, you are not paying the actual grocery store price for those groceries. You are paying a padded price for the groceries as well as a delivery fee. Don't do that. Don't, don't do Instacart, don't do delivery. Do the virtual shopping or the online shopping where you just pick up yourself from the grocery store later. They do the grocery shopping for you and it is the same prices that it is in the grocery store if you were to go in and shop for yourself. So I'm gonna say order for pickup. but not for delivery. All right, so we got 24 tips and tricks here to save you money at the grocery store. I hope this helps you guys. And if you guys have other tips, please share them with me because I am all ears. I need to save more money at the store. These groceries have just been killing me. That's why I wanted to start this and go over my tips and tricks just to make sure that I am utilizing them because I don't want to overspend on groceries. I spend enough. I don't want to waste anything. This is what I've got. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys have got something to add to it, please comment that below and let us all know your tips because I'm sure I missed a bunch of stuff out there. You guys, I know that I'm probably missing like half of what you guys are doing to save money. So let me know what you do and I will be back again soon. I hope you are too. Bye-bye now.